Welcome to Beach and Surf TV. My name's Clint Harris and we're here to talk about boards, fins and everything else you use to get your froth on the surf. Today we're talking about the Rusty Dwart and this is a very fat, short, stubby looking thing, kind of like a uh, dwarf. Um, that's suited for summer conditions, anything that's one to three foot, something that's a uh, really small day, but if it's three foot or two foot and got a little bit of push to it, I'm seeing a lot of guys around town that are actually using this board to really maximize their airs. I've seen some uh, guys absolutely bust out some great airs on these boards and uh, it's got some pretty interesting features that we'll jump into and explain how this board delivers you so much extra speed and fun in the small surf. So looking at the features of this board, the first thing we're going to obviously look at is the length of the thing. You're going to ride this four to six inches shorter than your average uh, shortboard. It's super, super flat, but keep in mind that you're going to need to ride this board short when the rock is that flat. If you take a board like this and let's say ride it in your traditional dimensions of up to 6.4, okay, you're riding a 6.4 short board and then you ride something like the Dwart, when it's super flat it's just not going to want to fit into the curve of the wave and it's going to be quite unresponsible and dull. So what you need to do when you're riding a board that is shaped like this and has the flatter rockers, you want to really focus in on going four to six inches shorter because it's going to be that nice skatey fun minimal experience in such a small loose little board. Um, I've tried these kind of boards in bigger lengths and shorter lengths and they do work really well as quite a short board. They are truly going for four to six inches shorter than your typical short board. So what makes this such a fun board? Like the direct thing that makes it so enjoyable with the features that we're going to have a look at is the speed that you're generating. When you've got so much speed in smaller conditions where you're usually expected to be a dull surf, you're able to get these little extra pops and skatey maneuvers or airs on a two to three foot day that you wouldn't normally get on your high performance shortboard. So when you're flattening out that rocker, the other thing that's going to make that quite advantageous to get more speed is volume. You're going to ride this board a few liters more than your typical average shop board. So keep that in mind, add two, add three uh, liters, whatever's gonna suit you. Um, it's going to give you that speed, your paddle power's there. There's a lot of things that you're getting from this mashup of features that you're finding in a seven foot mini mount, but being able to ride it quite short and have a ton of fun in those smaller days. One of the other features that makes it a great board is you've got a lot of volume at both ends of the board. So the first thing I'll point out is how thick that tail is right through here. You've got a double flyer to round tail, bringing it in a little bit, but it's quite chunky. It's got a lot of volume, and this is adding once again to that extra speed. Remember, when you've got the smaller conditions, the number one thing you're lacking is speed. So when you've got all the features marrying up, to give you speed, it's maximizing the fun in the surf. At the nose of the board, same deal. Extra volume, extra width. They're all really focusing in on trying to maximize the amount of speed you can get. And then I'm seeing guys use this once again. Four airs, all people that are just trying to really have fun without having to ride the seven foot or eight foot mini mouse. They're able to go down the five tens and five sixes and have a ton of fun out in the surf. Something like this. Now, particularly one of the things that I really like about this board, um, I think it's important when you're trying to choose a summer board, is the outline. I'm talking about the silhouette of the board. If you have a little look through the camera there, you can see that it's actually got quite a straight outline. So with a lot of boards out there, they're trying to kind of create a hybrid um, short board versus summer board um, mix up, and it becomes too curvy. So when you've got a bulbous board, if you imagine as an analogy that you're pushing a ball, like a blow up ball, through the water, it's pushing a lot of water and it's kind of resisting against the water. Where if you push through a spear or something, it's actually shooting through the water a lot faster. And the similar things that happen with surfboards. When you've got a straighter outline, you generate speed. And I'm hammering in on that speed thing again, but this board does keep that in mind. The outline of the board is reasonably straight and that's gonna help once again where there's a lot of boards in market that kind of compete with this type of model that tend to become a bit round throughout the silhouette of the board and you're losing some of the features that you're trying to invest in for that smaller surf. The one other thing that we can look at with this board when looking at the features is the tail. And 
It's the last thing I will point out, but it's kind of an interesting tail. You've got a double flyer to round tail, and why they're doing that is so they can keep a straight outline in the board, like I've just mentioned, but you're able to reduce the area of the tail, which allows you to sink the tail and still change direction effortlessly. Whereas if it had kind of that straight outline, if you can imagine a line continuing here, you'd have so much area that it'd make it a bit stiffer and not as loose and as enjoyable as the board could be. The other thing with the tail that we will look at is the fact that you do have the quad option there. And if you are a guy that is trying to generate a bit more speed, um, chucking the quad, you're going to stay a little higher in the wave. It is going to be a faster option and perfect if you're trying to bang out those airs, which you're buying this board for. So with all those features in mind with this board, it's one of my preferred summer options out there. This is a 6.2. You're probably not going to go as big as this board. It's 41 litres, but go a couple of extra litres than you do for your average surfboard. Take advantage of the fact that you go extra foam. You're going to get that extra speed, that extra fun of which this board is trying to achieve for you. Um, I really like the look of it. It's been one of my preferred options from the summer boards that I've ridden and, and had a bit of uh, time looking at. And I've had a chance to speak to some guys around the local area that are riding this model right now. And the feedback's been really, really strong. So I do recommend it. Come in, check it out in store. Be happy to talk about this one, the Rusty Dwight.